We are live now. Okay. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone who have joined us today in the valedictory session of the two-week online refresher course. I, on the behalf of my entire organizing team, feel honored to welcome our principal, Sir Ramanujan College. Uh, we will be joined by our chief guest, the honorable chief guest of the day, Dr. K. V. Subramanian, sir, the uh, chief economic advisor of the government of India uh, very shortly. So I would like to invite uh, uh, principal, sir, my colleagues, all the participants who have joined us today to this final day of faculty refresher course. I would like to start by wishing you and your families my personal best for your health and safety in these difficult times. I would also like to express my profound gratitude, not only to all those doctors, nurses, workers, who are serving so selflessly on the front lines of this health crisis, but also to every one of us who are trying in best of our spirits to manage and contribute to our work, home, health and safety precautions. COVID-19 pandemic has created uncertainty for all of us. And the uncertainty is specially pronounced for students, educators, and researchers. Our human family is stressed and our social fabric is being torn. COVID-19 is taking lives as well as attacking the real economy at its core. Trade, supply chains, businesses, and jobs. Entire countries and cities are being shut. Borders are closing. Companies are struggling to stay in business and families are simply struggling to stay afloat. We are in an unprecedented situation and the normal rules no longer apply. But managing the crisis, we also have a unique opportunity. Done right, we can steer the recovery towards a more sustainable and inclusive path. Teaching Learning Center Ramanujan College, in collaboration with Department of Economics Ramanujan College, set on a 15-day journey, the two-week online refresher course, intending to initiate discussion and brainstorming ideas for research on the topic Indian economy, exploring new opportunities in post-pandemic world. Even though we are still amidst pandemic and relevant data and research on the effect of pandemic in the country is yet premature to reach to decisive conclusion. But as we intended, I am sure as we are now concluding, this platform of refresher post must have put attention of our young faculties all across the countries towards a much needed subject field, and that is the recovery of Indian economy. Having talked about Indian industries, agriculture, healthcare, to banking sectors, to role of new digital currency, today is day 15th, the final day of this course. I would like to invite Mr. Chandan Sharma, Assistant Professor, Department of Economics, Ramanujan College, to present the report of the refresher course. Over to you, Chandan, sir. Please let me know when my screen is visible. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. I hope it is visible, Bhavna. We can see the screen. Okay, okay so uh, as Bhavna ma'am said, we are uh, just concluding our 15-day, uh, two-week uh, refresher course today. And so we have been like uh, collecting feedback from the participants day after day. And uh, we have collected a, like a collective feedback as well. So this report is based on that collective feedback. So uh, we have been following uh, this, just a minute. We have been following ministries of education for a uh, four quadrant approach. And in this, we have been uh, hosting this uh, sessions uh, using web audio, video contents. And there has been like MCQ quizzes and uh, other contents of the quadrant as well. Uh, we, uh, like initially when we started uh, talking about this event, then we had this idea that there has been several uh, FDP and they, uh, they had been quantitative quantitative in nature. So this, this uh, creates uh, like a gap for those people who are not really wor very worse with quantitative uh, aptitude. So we thought that why not go for a qualitative uh, like uh, content and uh, with that idea, and basically this idea was uh, brought, uh, uh, brought by our 
uh, teacher in charge and the convener of this FDP program, uh, Bhavna ma'am. And then we pursued and then we explored several topics related to Indian economy. We cannot claim that we covered each and every uh, topics related to Indian economy because, you know, it is very vast, but we have tried to cover as, as many topics as possible. So we have covered world of work, new, uh, food and nutrition, state of agriculture, global value chain, trade, industry, healthcare, uh, new education policy, political economy of COVID-19, uh, digital currency, and challenges to monetary policy, and the gender aspect of this pandemic as well. So uh, we, with these ideas, we reached out to several uh, resource persons, several academicians and field experts. And it, uh, we are like very happy to uh, tell you that we got overwhelming responses from them. Almost e each and every of, uh, resource person of them like give us positive response. It is another matter that uh, later uh, when this pandemic uh, wave the second wave of COVID uh, like was mounting, some of them could not participate in the program due to direct exposure or uh, indirect exposure to their family. But we have managed to like uh, bring uh, several uh, distinguished academicians on this platform and share their knowledge with our participant and with us. So we have, uh, we started with our uh, principal sir, Professor S.P. Agarwal, then we had Surjit Majumdar sir, uh, Professor R. Nagraj, Professor Jan Jo Thomas, Professor uh, uh, Dr. R. Ram Indridas, Deepa Sinha, Professor Saktiwal Silvaraj, Dr. Sakta Satyaki Roy, Professor Devanathan, uh, Dr. Nata Duwadi, and Professor Pritha Dev. And we have like uh, some field experts we, who are not direct in uh, like academics, but they are uh, related to this field. Uh, through their profession. So we had this, uh, Mr. Sarat Chandra, uh, Devajani Mohanti, and Abhik Barwa, sir. And again, we had uh, this field expert, uh, Professor Santosh Mehrotra, Dr. Uh, Anup Kumar Misra, and Professor Chetan Ghatik. So as a highlight, we had like uh, 16 live sessions and 17 total uh, videos. Uh, we received uh, eight, uh, like uh, several uh, feedbacks Okay, so we have received feedbacks from the participant, like uh, more than 4,500 responses. And we have, during these challenging times, it was like, uh, we were not that much optimistic that we will get participants, but we uh, can say that we got overwhelming response from the participants as well. So there has been 434 participants who registered for this program and uh, we, uh, I'm really sorry for interrupting, sir. We are joined by uh, our chief guest, uh, Dr. K.V. Subramanian, sir. So we welcome you to the course. Uh, so we had uh, uh, just begun uh, our uh, session. Allow him to complete. Please allow him to complete. Yes, I can sir. wait. Yes, sir. We will continue. Uh, this is the report of our uh, 15 days faculty refresher course that we are going through. And yeah. uh, Chandan, sir, is explaining us about the report, sir. Over to you, Chandan, sir. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank, uh, thank you, Bhana, and thank you, sir. So uh, we had these uh, 434 participants registered for the program, and we have live streamed these uh, lectures on the YouTube. So not only the participants, but general like people and the, those people who are working in these specific fields are going to benefit and have benefited uh, from this, this lecture. So not only now, it will contribute hugely in coming times in knowledge generation and resource. So now coming to the uh, assessment of like some specific uh, like uh, input uh, or uh, like uh, pointers. So this program has been hosted on this learning management system. So we have uh, reached out to participants with this, this question about functioning of the learning management system. About 81.2% of the participants rated uh, this uh, as excellent and an additional 16.8% rated it as very good. So user friendliness of this uh, learning management system. So this this has some interface, some uh, like, and uh, we asked how friendly that interface was there uh, with them. So we had uh, given them option uh, like the different option like a strongly agree, agree, neutral, uh, strongly disagree, etc. But we have like overwhelmingly uh, uh, like. Uh, uh, gotten the response from them on these two pointer uh, two options as well. Uh, so 73.5% of them strongly agreed that the 
LMS interface is uh, user friendly, while additional 26.5% agreed with the user friendliness of LMS interface. So there has been uh, like uh, several sessions. So on each topic, some of the topics are there uh, on which we had more than one session. For example, global value chain. On global value chain, we had Professor Devanathan and Dr. Satakira and the world of work on which uh, Professor uh, Santosh Mehrotra and Jan Joe Thomas delivered their lecture. So we had more uh, several sessions and uh, on the ratings of uh, overall sessions, we got uh, like 81.4% uh, participant rated it excellent and another 18.1% rated uh, very good. So each session uh, or each lecture has been of one and a half, uh, one hour to one and a half hour. But however, some of the like resource person uh, like uh, engaged the participant at a larger uh, time. So in question and answer rounds, it take uh, little more. So, uh, and in addition to that, uh, the participant need to uh, learn more and do quizzes, uh, complete quizzes and assignments. So on average, 43.3% uh, uh, participant spent three to four hours uh, during this program, and 41.1% uh, spent four to five hours, while additional 2.12.6% uh, spent more than five hours. So as, as I uh, like uh, mentioned in the very beginning that we had like uh, excellent array of like uh, resource person. So not only we felt it, uh, our uh, participants also felt that uh, like the, the resource person, the quality of resource person, their lectures, their approach has been excellent. So uh, around 80% of the participant has like uh, responded with excellent on their quality, on the resource uh, person's quality and, and is additional 19.4 percent has uh, responded with very good uh, like rating so now moving to the next slide uh, next slide is related to the overall content of the program okay so combining all the topics uh, their uh, quizzes and evaluation etc so around 78.4 uh, percent of the participants rated excellent uh, for the overall program or the content of the program while additional 20.2 percent rated very good again i would like to say here that we had offered them several options like excellent very good uh, good poor and since those are uh, on other like options we didn't get any response so their values were zero so we didn't uh, like in this graph that will not be there that's why uh, only three of them are here so Overall learning experience for this program, uh, around 60.1% rated excellent, 30, additional 36.2% uh, rated very good, while 3.7% uh, rated uh, good. So this sums up 200. Uh, learning outcomes, we we had uh, like moved forward with some idea key, uh, that what would this bring to the participants. And we got uh, this uh, outcome that uh, this uh, program and the sessions have uh, increased the familiarity of the participant with the current research in the respective field. What are these leading academicians are using uh, as methodology, what they are doing, what can be done in future. And this has created an inclusive space for the dialogue as well. So there ha this has not been unilateral. They have delivered their lecture and they have responded to the questions of the participants as well. So this has been there and they can like reach out to those resource persons later if they want of, uh, in the pursuit of their research. And this has fostered the creativity, innovation, understanding and decision making of the participants. And uh, we also have been conducting this program. So we have also felt it. So by knowing more, knowing current trends and methodology, there will be uh, uh, there will be a sharper, um, more understanding and uh, more creative okay, uh, regarding the methodology or objectives of questions. And this has uh, this program has created an avenue for more focused research, not only related to this pandemic, but in the post pandemic world. So this uh, our theme of this program had this uh, pandemic uh, world and largely uh, it was largely uh, like associated with this aspect of uh, today's life. So it uh, it has raised not only questions related to general macroeconomic trends, it has raised questions uh, related to post pandemic world as well. So we are quite uh, sure that this will uh, like this will incite uh, the participants to pursue some of uh, uh, to pursue or to pick some of the issues they uh, the resource person have raised and pursue research in the uh, in the coming time. So if we ask uh, uh, the like uh, 
participants that would they recommend their colleague or friends to join faculty development program if Ramanujan College offers in future. So, uh, and overwhelmingly, 97.7% responded with us, uh, with the us. So these are the major findings of the like uh, feedback uh, from our feedback that we have received from the participants. Uh, thank you for your patience and time. Uh, uh, back to you, Bahana ma'am. Thank you so much, Chandan sir. Thank you so much, Chandan sir, for briefing us about the course. Now, may I invite Principal Ramanujan College and Director, Teaching Learning Center Ramanujan College, Professor S.P. Agarwal sir, to welcome our chief guest and address the August gathering. Thank you, Bhavna. Good afternoon and welcome uh, to all who are present with us this afternoon, especially uh, Dr. Krishnamurti Subramaniam ji, who has found time for us uh, in spite of his busy schedule. Well, um, he is a true friend of the institution because, uh, you know, he talked earlier uh, uh, to the students and today he will be talking to all of us, uh, mostly the teaching community in the country, about 500 teachers. Well, uh, first of all, uh, you know, I can say that he will be speaking on state of Indian economy. We cannot get better person than him to speak on Indian economy because he is involved in today in, in day to day uh, policies of uh, Indian economy during this pandemic. Well, uh, um, I welcome uh, Ms. Bhavna, the convener uh, of the program, all the colleagues who are uh, here to, uh, you know, who has done wonderful job in organizing this program and also the participants because they are the key for us. That is why we are here uh, from all over the country. Um, I can see that uh, the participants are, uh, uh, you know, from Northeast, from JNK, from Maharashtra, the, all, all part of the country. So once again, I welcome you uh, to this valedictory function of two week online refresher course on Indian economy, exploring new economic opportunities post pandemic world. Well, friends, uh, I'm not an expert in the area and I will not take much time because uh, our expert is here. But briefly, I can say that uh, this, this program is uh, organized under the ages of Pandit Madan Mohan Malvi National Mission for Teachers and Teaching. And I can say that uh, this mission is to train and to, uh, you know, reaching the unreached and to, to uh, do the outcome based learning for our teaching community. So in the last one year, uh, since this pandemic started, we have trained more than 100,000 teachers, which was the ambition of the Ministry of Education to reach to everyone in the country. And this year, again, we might reach another 100,000 because we want to reach everyone. Uh, another important feature here is that, uh, uh, you know, we get a lot of motivation from Pandit Madan Mohan and Ramanujan because both of them created opportunities out of nothing. So that is the key uh, thing, you know, and our college is named after Ramanujan and Pandit Madan Mohan. This is the scheme of uh, teaching, uh, you know, under which we are doing this program. Well, uh, the, the program has covered most of the, uh, you know, topics which, which was given in the presentation, uh, not only on agriculture, but, uh, you know, on global value chain, international trade, uh, Indian industry, healthcare system, which is the big, biggest thing, you know, you have done a uh, role of fiscal monetary policy and digital currency. Well, uh, friends, another important thing is that, uh, which I always uh, feel that this country can create a lot of opportunity out of this pandemic. Of course, we are taken aback by this second wave, but still there is no dearth of ideas. There is no dearth of innovation. There's no dearth of new technology and no dearth of R&D in this country. So why we cannot edge on others and we can create value to our economy. We, we, uh, we can uh, you know, definitely take this country to a different level by uh, making this pandemic as our opportunity. So uh, you know, with this, uh, another important thing you know, to the teachers that whatever they have gained, they should take it to young minds. They should take it to the classroom. They should do better research. They should do interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary research. That is our ambition. That is also the, uh, you know, uh, the, the ambition or, or, or the mission of a new education policy 2020 that 
we should reach to everyone and the students should be given new things so that uh, we can create similar kind of uh, atmosphere as we do in a physical classroom. So with this background, once again, I welcome uh, Subramaniam ji who has found time for us and uh, he will be speaking on state of Indian economy and I think the, that will uh, give us some roadmap to, to the future of this uh, the economy of this country. Thank you very much, Bhavna ji. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your words of wisdom and encouragement. As always, this boosts our energy and motivation to put our best in whatever we do. These are especially important when we try to conduct such an extensive and important event, the faculty development program, during these challenging times. Also, this address is very important for the new members of the uh, Department of Economics and the college who have just started the uh, new journey. Thank you for your time, encouragement, support and the liberty you grant us for doing whatever needs to be done. Uh, thank you, sir. As, uh, as it has been highlighted, we are reaching the conclusion of the program today. In addition to an address by our principal, sir, we have one more very special guest to deliver the valedictory lecture on the theme, State of Indian Economy. We have with us the Chief Economic Advisor of India, Dr. Krishnamurti Venkata Subramanian. It is an honor and privilege to invite you, sir, to deliver the valedictory lecture. Over to you, sir. Very good afternoon, and uh, thank you very much for providing me the opportunity to share my thoughts. Um, my apologies for joining a little late, but I think the reward for that was that I was able to see the significant benefits that uh, have been brought by this program, as I could see the presentation that was made by uh, Sri Chandan Kumar Sharma. Um, I think more initiatives like this must be launched. Um, <clears throat> before I actually speak about the uh, economy itself, given that you know there was so much emphasis on research, uh, which, I, which by the way, is very, very heartening for someone like me. Uh, just one aspect I want to highlight, um, just so that all of all of uh, you know the participants here uh, feel uh, motivated to do cutting edge edge research. Um, so if if you look at you know people who have really changed uh, the way countries think, uh, you will realize that uh, you know those have been done primarily by people who have. Uh, brought in very careful, carefully researched ideas. Um, I think this is true certainly in the advanced economies, but it is also happening now in, in our country. So um, as, as academics, um, we have two critical roles that we play, one as a teacher and second as a scholar. Um, the role that we play as a scholar is even more important than the role that we play as a teacher. As a teacher, of course, we have to disseminate so that the next generation uh, you know, really understands and learns in depth all the key ideas. Um, but the role that we play as a scholar is even more important because research is the legacy that we leave uh, because even after our bones are interned uh, you know, down in the ground, uh, the ideas that we have propagated Will will live long long after you know after we are done uh, you know with our with our time in this in this planet. Therefore, the role as a scholar is is something that all of us should take very very uh, seriously and be ambitious in terms of the kind of research that we want to do. Uh, here, I would urge all of you to target the leading journals in the field. Um, it's you know maybe this is a reflection of where India today is that um, uh, I wouldn't ask, I wouldn't, you know, waste my time publishing in any Indian or Asian journals um, because, you know, far too few, too few people read them. I can tell you no policymaker uh, ever reads, you know, any Indian or Asian journal. So don't waste your time, you know, writing in journals that policymakers don't, you know, don't read. This relates to what I was talking about uh, in terms of scholarly work. If you want your work, your research to have impact, then you have to write in the outlets that the policymakers read. And those at this point in time today are the best American journals research because the best ecosystem in the world today is, you know, is in, in the US. Uh, and when I'm talking about here, 
you know, um, if you're if you're doing research in economics, target the American Economic Reviews, the Quarterly Journal of Economics, Journal of Political Economy, those the top 10 journals, or if you're a labor economist, Journal of Labor Econ Economics, you know, those are the kind of journals that you should be targeting. Otherwise, please do remember that, you know, you will be getting a publication for publication's sake, but they will not change, um, you know, thinking, they will not change policy. And, you know, um, um, you know, if you want to be doing research for that purpose, so then you have to actually really focus on publishing in the top outlets. And for that, by far the most important, and I, this is the ingredient that I would want to actually mention. Uh, there are two key things that are really critical if you have to publish, publish in the top journals, you know, uh, top American journals. Um, first thing is understand the distinction between correlation and causality. If you have to do research, all high quality research is about demonstrating causality in a convincing manner. You know, I'll, I'll use a story here to illustrate this. Uh, this story appears in the Kathopanishad, um, where in the Kathopanishads, the, um, you know, there is this uh, a conversation about a crow coming and sitting on the branch of a tree. And just when the crow comes and sits on that branch of a tree, um, a, a fruit from that particular branch falls. The crow thinks that it made the fruit fall. Now remember, made the fruit fall is a causal statement that you know, the crow coming and sitting on the branch made the fruit fall, but they could have just been two correlated events. And that is the key. Correlated means they just coincided. There was no causation from the crow sitting and coming and sitting on the branch of the tree and the fruit falling. So, um, you know, and, and how do you get from correlation to causality? by removing all confounding factors. Um, you know, in anything that, for instance, in this, in the context of this example, it could be, um, uh, you know, a gush of wind flew precisely at that point in time, or maybe that fruit that was, that fell was very ripe. Maybe the crow that came was actually a heavier crow than a normal crow. Because the question that you want to use, if you're a policymaker, in this, if a typical crow comes and sits on that branch of a tree, which has a typical branch, typical fruit, will the fruit fall every time? Uh, that is what is a causal question. And for, you have to actually get from correlation to causality. A book that I would actually highly, highly recommend all of you to read from cover to cover is this book called Mostly Harmless Econometrics. It's uh, written by Joshua Angrist and, and Pishke. Uh, the title is very simple, Mostly Harmless Econometrics. The, the you know if those of you who are doing research damodar gujarati wagere ye aapne padha hai wo sab nikal ke alag rakhiye usse kuch fayda nahi hota hai pick up mostly harmless econometrics um, by angrist and pishke and read it from the first page to the last page till you have not done, not read that book from first page to last page and not assimilated jo aap research kar rahe ho that will never get it to any of the top outlets and uske baad aap basically in that case you're just doing research for getting increments which is not what a scholar is you know that's what in increments ke liye kaam kar liya wo to you know wo to government mein bhi log karte hain private sector mein bhi karte hain what's the difference between a, a scholar and somebody who's just an employee scholar wants to actually make a difference to society if you want to make a difference to society then you have to do research that actually will be read by policy makers and for that you have to really you know do very careful research that gets to, to, to causality. That's my first point. Second point is you have to actually, you know, just if you take US may some question has been studied, India may wo kaam karta hai kya isko, you do that, that nobody is interested. You know, that will not get you a top journal publication at all. It has to be something that, that expands knowledge of, of economics. So that's the second key part. And the third most important is if you cannot write well, you cannot actually be publishing in the top journal. So these are the th three things that I would say, understand econometrics very well, read mostly harmless econometrics, and you know, don't just replicate research that has been done in other countries and seeing, oh, India may come karta hai kya. It will not get you top publications. And third, learn to write very well. Um, if you have to publish in these top journals, your most referees will make an assessment of is this paper good quality or not, by just reading the abstract and the introduction of the paper. 
so you have to make the case compellingly you know and a scholar is very much like an entrepreneur it's just that a scholar is an entrepreneur in the business of ideas so you have to sell your idea equally well the way in which an entrepreneur sells his or his or her product for the for the scholar the idea is that product and you have to sell that and you cannot sell with a poor marketing campaign so that's the other important so please do keep these three things in mind be ambitious don't do research for increments do research to change thinking so that's the that's the first thing that i want to actually talk about let me uh, you know now now uh, talk about the topic that i um, have been uh, requested to speak about which is on the indian economy um, you know i can talk on the indian economy for hours together um, but given the given the paucity of time let me focus on what we have been doing in the you know in the in the in the uh, post covid world and you know during the last two two odd years um, the biggest change that uh, the that we are seeing in the economy you will you know the impact of that will be felt a few years from now because um, economic policy impact of that and outcomes economic outcomes Uh, comes with a lag, and let, to to explain this, let me um, you know use the following parallel. If you uh, if you uh, um, let's say check into a hotel room, uh, you know you're traveling, you go into a hotel room. When you step into the hotel room, you find that the temperature in the room is very very um, very very low. You start you know shivering. You go to the thermostat of the of the AC, and you find that the temperature has been set to be. To be 14 degrees centigrade, and that's why you're feeling very cold. Now you want the the room to you know, to become of room temperature so that you can you know you find it comfortable. So I said, चलो जल्दी जल्दी ही you know इसको heat कर देते हैं. You basically put it to 30 degrees so that you know it the room becomes uh, you know warm if quickly enough. Uh, you do that, go to sleep, and then you wake up at one o'clock or two o'clock in the night. and then you have to take out your you know shirt banyan or or equivalent of that for the women because the room has become really hot now you change the thermostat at about 9:30 10 o'clock you know in in the night and the actual outcome of the temperature increasing happened at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the night that is actually the exemplification of how macroeconomic policy you know is felt on macroeconomic outcomes the changing that temperature on the thermostat is the policy the outcome is basically you know the temperature that you see 1 o'clock or 2 at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock so mark my words you know the, the all the hard work that we have done um, you know the impact of this will be will be you know felt in a year or two from now but it is really important to understand what is the big change in thinking that we brought um, so uh, if i if if i were to characterize the way in which i think about economic development in the in the country think i think about that as a tripod a tripod which has three legs to it um let's let's understand each of these three legs that will give you a sense of you know how economic development has to be thought about in the indian context or at least that's the way i think uh, you know about about economic development the first tripod the first leg of that tripod is uh, a combination of two things which is uh exclusive focus on economic growth combined with efficient welfare so growth and welfare combined um but but not but not you know uh, confused with each other in in the following way which is that macroeconomic policies are all driven towards uh towards enhancing growth in the economy so you know we we whenever we comes to policies we we choose those policies that enhance growth but of course in a society like ours and this is a problem now with every other society there are aspects of actually poverty inequality etc which need to be addressed as well and just growth you know is unlikely to address all those you know the, those those uh, macro economic aspects as well so welfare becomes then the second part which is the resources that are generated from that think about a pizza you know uh, we are trying to split that pizza we want to grow the pizza uh, but mark suppose that let's say you know because i am the chief economic advisor we actually order a pizza you know and and uh, let's say uh, you know you all say that uh, that you sh i should have half the pizza um, 
Now, you know, that's something which is, it is, is an inequitable distribution because if I have half the pizza, each one of you will have you know, very, very small slices. Um, and that is, that is inequ inequitable. What we can do there is actually now either, either we can do, which is that, you know, um, I, I can say, okay, of the half pizza that I have, I keep, you know, half of that, which is I keep one quarter and distribute the others, the other, others with you all. That's one way of doing it. Another way is to actually say, let's just expand the entire, the size of the pizza, double the size of that pizza. I still keep my, you know, the, the size that I had in the, the, the earlier one. Suppose it was actually, let's say, you know, just more uh, uh, concreteness. Suppose it was a one kg pizza, and, you know, I take number ka booker, so actually I keep half kg. kg rakh leta hu. So, you know, the rest of it was aadha kg was getting split with all of you. If we increase the size of that pizza from 8 kg to 5 kg, I still keep only half kg, but the rest of you have four and a half kgs. That is what basically the combination of growth plus welfare is. That you generate enough resources, grow the size of the pizza, that there is enough to actually do welfare, welfare programs like the Ayushman Bharat, like um, you know, uh, the uh, Swachh Bharat campaign, the, the, the uh, Awaz Yojana, uh, all these are basically the Dhargar Jal, all these are important aspects of welfare. So, you know, that's the first, the most important thing. And here, let me make another uh, observation here. You know, you'll find a lot of people having this saying, you know, should, should our macroeconomic policies be focused on enhancing growth or should it be focused on reducing inequality? And that's where, again, this pizza example that I gave you actually, you know, can, can, can be utilized. Um, when we keep macroeconomic policies just to grow the size of the pizza from 1 kg to 5 kg and use welfare to actually, you know, then ensure that, that I continue to get only half a kg, that I don't keep two and a half kgs out of the 5 kg, you know, so that the, the people who actually had less, let's say, have four and a half kgs instead of just half kg. When you do that, that is when you get the best outcome because you know the uh, that the, the, the benefits of growth reaches largest you know large and la larger and larger sections of people and that is why it's really important but if you try to address the pro macroeconomic problems you know by saying oh let's let's do in such a way that inequality is reduced then you will not get growth you will only be redistributing you know the po poverty around us so you will keep that same 1 kg pizza you know out of that 1 kg even if i basically let's say take only you know 10 grams let's say you no know, instead of half a kg even then there's only 1 kg to distribute but if you have 5 kg to distribute everybody has more so, but, but, but it is important to keep in mind that when you generate five kgs that I don't consume two and a half kgs out of that, just like I was consuming half a kg out of one kg. So this is the first important, the most important aspect. One more comment I will make on this, you know, in this year's economic survey, we had, uh, we had written a chapter and many of you might have actually uh, seen it as well. Uh, the chapter was titled growth versus inequality, conflict or convergence. Um, and, and this uh, was, was motivated by a lot of the debate in the advanced economies. Um, in the advanced economies, given the stage of development that they are in, uh, they, they focus, the focus on has, has come a lot more on inequality. But we should be very careful to not transport what policies advanced economies implement now for our, you know, for, 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 for our policies now. Because we should be comparing, you know, as using development time rather than calendar time. What do I mean by that? Which is we should be looking at, you know, the stage of development that the United States was in, let's say, in the 1930s, 1940s or so, or, a, a, or a, you know, Europe was there in the 1950s. Uh, you know, that is the policies that they implemented at that point in time is what has a lot of relevance for us today, because we are at a stage of development that these economies were in that period of time. So it is development time that we should use to actually compare what is right. There are, there are a lot of people who say, oh, because advanced economies are doing that today, we should implement it. No, because we are at a different stage of development, and especially in this debate on growth versus inequality. You know, the advanced economies have actually have 
have have reduced absolute poverty to almost you know non to negligible proportions they don't have you know absolute poverty as much as we have um, not only that they cannot grow at the seven and a half eight you know percent or even grow more than that per annum that we can grow uh, these are two important distinctions um, not only can we grow at much higher rates but no, and no but, but but also it must be recognized that we need that growth to actually lift a lot of people out of poverty uh, through welfare programs so you know i think this is something which is very critical therefore the first leg has to be exclusive focus on economic growth through the micro, through the macro economic policies and then using very efficient welfare for instance the jandal aadhar mobile trinity jam trinity is actually is a good uh, vehicle for ensuring efficient welfare so that there isn't actually corruption pilferage in the welfare program so micro economic focus on welfare programs to deliver them very efficiently that's the first leg of you know of the um, economic model the second leg of the of the, that economic model is now so the the rest two of the legs that i'm going to focus on is i'm going to talk about how do you get that growth how do you get that high growth 7 and a half 8 or maybe even higher uh, percentage so though the two legs are about that the first thing you know and you know the first which is the second leg of this economic model is you know is to focus on wealth creation and ethical wealth creation in particular and this is incredibly important in the indian context because a lot of us actually when we you know when we think about the about the thoughts that we have inherited from our you know from our parents or maybe our grandfather's generation there is a lot of residual of the socialist era in our thinking um, and that's because of the 45 odd years of socialist policies that we pursued uh, which as, as you know you know uh, we did not get high growth at all in fact only after 1991 did we after post liberalization did we get high growth um, one remnant of the socialist era policies has been that wealth and wealth creation were thought about as necessary evil not as something that is good um, you know and 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 this if you think about it it is so antithetical to our culture um, you know with the entire socialist uh, um, you know uh, um, sort of dictum was borrowed from from other countries like russia you know uh, communist china and and the eastern bloc that is not what is actually consistent with our culture and here i'm going to spend some time explaining you know what was our culture first you know i'm sure many of us do this at home right at home um, you know we all write shubh lab simple cheese you know if you basically end up if, if you go to a, a store right if you go to a you know a, a kirana dukan kirana dukan mein kya likhe likhe lik, hote ho log shubh lab likhte hain uska matlab what is what is it that what side that is being conveyed that you know lab is profit do profit by actually doing something that is good ye to nahi likhta wahan pe actually ki shubh aur hani right the person doesn't have you ever seen anybody writing shubh aur hani ki main hani karunga aur actually fir shubh karunga no wo nahi kar payega kyunki kab tak you know and that is where the, the the idea of profit becomes you know because he may basically make losses for maybe few months maybe year maybe two years after that he has to go out of business he cannot do you know if he has to continue doing shub you know over a long period of time then he has to make some profits using that profits which he can use for himself and his family and plow those profits back to actually grow the business and that is why shub, that is why shub lab is actually what is and that is what is our culture here let me spend some time on talking about some important research that you know that 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 an english scholar did uh, called angus madison um, he you know he basically went and uh, looked at the gdp contribution to gdp of um, of of um, various nations over 2000 years so starting from 1 ad till 2000 ad very painstaking research it's a book that's published by oxford university press uh you know i i uh, would urge you many of you to go and read read, read that book um the reference for that is there in the economic survey uh, the 2019 20 last year's economic survey has this and you will notice the first very first chart in last in the last year's economic survey which by the way the the um, you know uh, the the uh, theme for that was ethical wealth creation 
The very first chart there is the contribution towards GDP uh, by, by various countries. And one fact that many of us as Indians actually tend to ignore is that till 1750 AD, 1750 AD, that means this is three quarters of known economic history. 1750 out of 2020 years is basically three quarters of known economic history. Till 1750 AD, India accounted for at least one third of world's GDP, at least one third of world's GDP. And this is not something, you know, this is not a flight of fancy. This is actual empirical data, you know, empirical evidence that's been collected by scholars published by the Oxford University Press. And what is basically shown there is that up until 1750 AD, India accounted for at least one third of the world's GDP. Now, just to give you a sense of how much of economic dominance this, this corresponds to, let's take the country that we all recognize as the leading economic power in the world, the United States. Um, you know, how long has the United States been a dominant economic superpower? For about 50 years. 50 years, that's half a century. And you know, what has the United States at its peak contribution to world GDP has been about 34, 35% at its peak. Uh, in other words, the maximum contribution for, you know, of, has been about 34, 35%. In India's case, this, the minimum contribution was 33%. Maximum actually, of course, was, was close to 50%. And not for half a century, which is what the United States has been an economic superpower. India was a superpower for 17 and a half centuries. So 35 times as longer, and at a minimum 33% took about 30, maximum of 33%. Now, why am I talking about this? Because as I mentioned, talking about the second leg, I said, you know, our policies have to be consistent with our culture, not something that was imported from Russia or from, you know, other, other countries or, for, or, for, or Germany, for instance, Karl Marx, you know, wrote basically, you know, German, German guy. Um, so, you know, those might have worked for their, their countries, but we have to do what is right with our culture. And if you go and read what was it that led to this dominance and the, you know, economic survey last year, the first chapter, you know, details this, you know, at length. Um, it, it talks about actually the thinking, the economic model in India up until around 1750 was one that, you know, left, that was a marriage of the invisible hand of markets. This is Adam Smith's language. India's language was not that. I'll come to India's language, but the marriage of invisible hand of markets with the hand of ethics. So the, the what really led to this kind of dominance was the marriage of the invisible hand of markets with the hand of ethics. That's what really led to the, 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 the dominance. Now let me frame this in the Indian, you know, the, 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 the native language. Um, and one of the advantages that I've had, this is, you know, um, in fact, you know, uh, th this insight that I've actually gotten is because of the vantage point that I have as someone who's actually been able to read all that the West has to offer in terms of modern economics, um, having been trained at uh, a place like the University of Chicago. And at the same time, my up upbringing, you know, I was not born with a silver spoon. I was born in a very, very humble, uh, uh, humble background, which I'm very proud of actually, because it gave me a perspective, you know, thereby to not minimize what the Indian culture really, you know, uh, provides. Uh, the dharohar jo bolte hai, so actually, you know, that is something I learned to appreciate and read the literature and notice I'm calling literature, I'm not calling it scriptures because scriptures have a religious overtone, but anything that is part of printed word is actually literature. There is literature in Sanskrit, there is literature in Hindi, there is literature in Tamil, in vernacular languages, and I have actually been fortunate enough to have been exposed to, you know, to some of this literature in native languages. And that is what has actually led to, um, you know, this, this sort of this view. Now, let me translate what I said in terms of the marriage of the invisible hand of markets with the hand of ethics. That's what, you know, in basically Adam Smith's uh, language or the Western economic thinking, that's how you would put it. In the Indian context, to understand this, you know, we have to uh, go back to what we, what, you know, in Vedanta, you know, is, uh, uh, is called as 
four noble pursuits, which is dharma, earth, kama, moksha. Um, dharma is basically just righteousness or the way in which things things are. Um, you know, the the, the uh, pani ka pani ka dharma hai shital karna. Aapka dharma hai jalana. That's what actually that is in the intrinsic righteousness or intrinsic property. That's what that's the that's the idea with which dharma is seen. You know, in the uh, similarly, then dharma, earth, earth is basically well. Kama, of course, is desire and moksha is liberation. Um, now, the Indian conception was the marriage of the hand of earth with that of dharma. Earth and dharma actually wedded together is what actually led to the ethical wealth creation. That earth is basically hand of earth is the invisible hand of markets, and and the hand of ethics is basically the hand of dharma. Uh, or dharma, you know, and that is what really led to that the kind of dominance that India had. Uh, India used to, you know, when I talk about the invisible hand of markets, that basically about economic activity, trade. Um, if you go and read, you know, Arthashastra by Kautilya, um, you know, and that's something which is it's a fantastic book to read. There are people, um, you know, German scholars in books that are published by Duke University Press and Oxford University Press and Cambridge University Press. Who have talked about the enormous influence that Kautilya had on economic thinking, not only in India but also elsewhere in the world? Uh, you know, up until about twelve and a half century, till the twelve and a half century, you know, Kautilya, uh, Kautilya's ideas had enormous, in, you know, importance actually in in the Indian entire Indian subcontinent and beyond as well. And this is not an Indian talking about this. Actually, these are Western scholars actually. In, in reputed outlets writing of writing about this. So, if you go and read Gautilya, you know Arthashastra, he says he exhorts the king, saying, "Remove all restrictions to economic activity. Remove all restrictions to economic activity, so that economic activity can happen." And he says, "It is economic activity that leads to prosperity today, not only today but future in future as well." And this is, you know, if you think about today's World Bank's rankings on ease of doing business. That is nothing but Cortilia's idea of removing restrictions on economic activity, and this is something that used to exhort the king uh, long back. In my native language, Tiruppural, you know, written by Saint Tiruvalluvar, um, you know, uh, uh, a critic talked about uh, about uh, Tiruppural. This is what he had to say: that across about 1,200, you know, sh uh, shlokas, and I'll come to that. The beauty of that in a minute. Entire wisdom that a, that a, that a human needs to know has been condensed into these 1200 uh, odd, odd shlokas. So the critic said it's as if uh, Saint Tiruvalluvar took the entire water in the in the oceans, took that entire water and condensed it into one mustard seed. Ek 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 rai ka dane mein, ek rai ke dane mein, saara jo saagar mein jitna bhi pani usko samaliya. That's what basically. That's the kind of you know um, wisdom there is, and why? Because you know across three different sections, each shloka in the Tirupural has basically exactly the same number of words, two lines, exact same number of words. Each chapter has exactly ten shlokas. So if I say, for instance, I am reciting shloka number eighty-three, you know I am actually talking from the eight, eighth chapter. If I actually say this is shloka number 793, I am talking about actually the 80th chapter. So you can, you don't need to know at all, you know, which even in the Bhagavad Gita, for instance, the shlokas, you know, the number of shlokas are different. You know, some some chapters actually have far more shlokas than others. But Tirukkural actually was written in such a way that every chapter has exactly 10 shlokas, and each shloka has two lines, and each line has the same number of words. Can you imagine actually that you know? And the, the, it is it is it is uh, split into three parts, which is actually one for material wealth, one for spiritual progress, and one for uh, for for basically material desires and you know calm. And it covers that entire gambit across almost 1,200 shlokas written almost you know uh, 3,500 years back. And Tirukkural also talks about wealth. And wealth creation in positive terms talks about how one of, in one of the shlokas, Tiruvalluvar says that there is no better uh, uh, way than killing the pride of your of your enemy 
than show than becoming wealthy because when you become wealthy you actually you know can your opponents can see how capable you are so he also then you know uh, um, tiruvalluvar talks about wealth not just saying make wealth in the right way he said only wealth that is made in the right way stays with you not only you but your generations future generations get to enjoy the wealth that you made only if that wealth was acquired through good means shubh lab that idea of shubh lab um, so these ideas actually ideas like these is what led to that kind of dominance that i spoke about wealth creation ethical wealth creation that's the second leg of the economic model thinking about wealth as a as a virtue wealth creation as a as a, as a virtue ethical wealth creation not wealth made in any way any way but you know in the right way and finally which is the third leg which is you know even more granular in terms of the model exact economic model for 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 you know for 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 economic development uh, is a virtuous cycle that starts from private investment um now in the 2018 19 economic survey we had uh, when we wrote that survey uh, trying to lay out the, the economic strategy for india to become a 5 trillion dollar economy what we did was the first thing we did we looked at every country that grew at least at 5% in real terms for at least a decade that was the filter we ran countries over the last one century that grew at least at 5% for at least a decade and then went and saw you know analyze what is it that that country did well whether it is the united states after the great depression whether it is the, it is europe especially countries like west germany after the second world war japan after the second world war the east asian economies in the 1970s onwards uh, uh, the the you know china after 1970s you look at each one of these countries they registered high growth of at least 5% plus for at least a decade because they enabled private investment it was on the back of private investment even if you look for india itself up until 2008 2009 when we were growing at 8% you know plus our gross fixed capital formation in the economy was close to 40% we reached about 39 odd percent so even in india's growth phase as well it happened because of you know of, of private investment so when you look across countries over the last century that has that have grown at really high pace of you know of, of growth they have grown because of private investment private investment is what leads to you know creation of jobs in the economy improves productivity and jobs and increase in productivity actually put you know more money in the hands of people through wages jobs in the organized sector and increase productivity puts money in the hands of people when people spend that money that's what is consumption in the economy anticipating consumption in second round effects anticipating consumption in second round effects firms will invest more so in the in any macroeconomic you know uh, model you have to think about first round effects versus second round effects versus third round effects etc consumption actually increases as an outcome in the first round effect but becomes the cause for increase in investment in the second round effects and that is how this virtuous cycle proceeds in any economy so that's the third uh, you know third third leg so if you think about it you know the three legs are at are sitting at different levels of abstraction the first leg which is your growth plus welfare is sitting at almost 1 lakh feet above so this is that is idea in terms of what is the objective that should be pursued 1 lakh feet above the second you know leg which is which is your um, wealth creation and ethical wealth creation is 20 30000 feet above actually saying in terms of you know what should be the objective that should be pursued and that and by the way wealth creation then means you know enabling of private sector privatization asset monetization all those are important because that's where efficiency and productivity gains come and the third is maybe is not at is about 500 feet 600 feet in terms of what exactly to do which is encourage private investment so all those laws and regulations that inhibit private investment need to be dismantled and laws and regulations that enable private investment are must be supported that's what then leads to actually overall welfare enhanced welfare you know job creation and productivity in the economy and that is sort of th this is the economic model uh, that that uh, you know india has as pursued over the last uh, 
you know, last couple of years. And let me just uh, end by talking about the policies that are that have been enacted, which are consistent with this model. Uh, if you take look at privatization, labor law reforms, the uh, you know uh, the, the enterprise policy focused on the private sector, the changes in the MSME definitions, opening up of several sectors, cryptography, defense. You know, uh, uh, coal, cement, many, many of these. When you take all that, these are basically just, you know, exemplifications of of, of this uh, policy design. Uh, so I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Professor Subramaniam. It, it was a highly intellectual and wonderful lecture. Not only you emphasized about the research, which I think uh, our young teachers will definitely learn out of it and three traits, how to do meaningful research and where to publish, because that is always I, I, I encourage to my faculty that do the publication in the best and international journals. That is the key if we want to make it meaningful and also to commercialize our research to to uh, you know, how to, uh, like you said, entrepreneurship uh, of your research, how to sell your idea. That is also very important unless until you go to those levels, you cannot do it. And then you explained the state of economy. Uh, and uh, I think our young teachers will get a lot of motivation that uh, what we were in 1750 and that is what we want to replicate now by uh, using this, this uh, opportunity. And uh, uh, I think if we can uh, do, uh, you know, in next five years, we can uh, definitely do some, some wonders and, and you explained the various uh, programs and policies of the government of India, which uh, you feel are going to give us fruits in next few years. So uh, thank you very much, sir. And uh, we will continue to have your wisdom in near future. And uh, this college is always indebted to people like you who are available to us to give knowledge to our young faculty and students. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All of you stay safe and stay healthy. Okay, so unmute Kalija. Okay, so with this, we move to our uh, next uh, like uh, program, uh, next event in this program. So in addition to the feedback and report, we have reached out to five participants to share their experience for this program. Uh, due to the limitation of time, we have kept it to five only. Uh, we have with us uh, Bhavna Yadav Uttar, from Uttar Pradesh, Jitesh Chandra Shaha from Tripura, Kailash Chandra Mishra from Odisha, Latak uh, Koparde from Karnataka, uh, Surendra Meher from Uttar Pradesh. I would like to request each of these participants to introduce them briefly and then share their experience and feedback for the program. Uh, since this, uh, uh, this uh, there is only 10 minutes of time frame for this uh, like event, uh, I request them to take maximum two minutes uh, per participant. So, uh, okay, let me call... Uh, by name. So uh, we can go like this. First, Bhavna Yado, then Jitesh Chandra Saha, then Kailash Chandra Mishra, uh, then Lata Koparde, and then Surendra Mehar uh, from Uttar Pradesh, alphabetically. Thank you, Dr. Pradesh. everyone. Uh, I'm Bhavna Yado from KMDGPG College, Badalpur, uh, Gautam Bodhnagar, Assistant Professor of Economics, Department of Economics. Uh, today, as we are on the conclusion of the two-week refresher course on Indian economy, exploring opportunities in post-pandemic world, uh, I would first like to congratulate the organizing committee uh, for organizing such a wonderful course for uh, the refresher course. Uh, it was really nice experience exploring different aspects of COVID and post-COVID uh, recovery. How are we going to recover, especially uh, in the post-COVID period? Uh, I think almost all the areas related to the economy were covered, whether it is international trade uh, or it is women workforce, uh, impact on health, impact on economy, impact on banking sector. I think almost all the sectors were covered. That was really wonderful. Uh, and uh, the resource persons also were really full of knowledge. 
uh, and uh, they were successfully conveying they were giving the knowledge to us imparting the knowledge to us regarding the post uh, pandemic recovery of the economy especially i would uh, here like to mention the lecture of professor santosh mehrotra and that was really wonderful how he laid emphasis on the post economic recovery and what problems i mean what other things which we are lacking in in our indian economy and uh, what should be done what can be done and what should be done it was really wonderful and uh, it was a flexible program and uh, i think we didn't find any overburden at any time uh, which was which is very important for any program uh, like this in uh, especially during the present pandemic time uh, i would uh, just like to give one suggestion that was uh, regarding the quizzes i think we had discussed also in the discussion for forum uh, so that need to be done rest i think it was really a nice experience uh, two weeks experience two week long journey along with you uh, again i would like to thanks a lot for the conveners to the conveners for giving me this, this opportunity of uh, coming in this uh, program in the final valedictory session Thanks a lot. Thank you, Bhavana, ma'am. I would now like to invite Jitesh Chandra Saha to share his feedback mm -hmm. and experience. Uh, this is Jitesh Chandra here. Can you listen? Yes, you are audible. Yeah, uh, Jitesh Chandra Saha is an assistant professor in a college of Kamalpur uh, Government Degree College under Tripura. Um, now today is the uh, valedictory session and uh, the last day as well uh, first let me uh, tell all of you a very good afternoon a very good afternoon to the all the uh, fellow participants uh, resource persons dignitaries and uh, organizers uh, of this refresher course organized uh, by ramanujan college now this uh, refresher course uh, is really uh, a knowledgeable one uh, in fact uh, all of us uh, have this opportunity to get upgraded to get refreshed uh, since we are in the line of economics we have some uh, knowledge of indian economy um, but this refresher course actually Uh, better uh, informs us uh, about the present working of indian economy uh, what should be done and what should not be done uh, at present time as well as the upcoming time and uh, the organizers uh, thank you again uh, for giving such an opportunity uh, it is a matter of pride and uh, honor to speak on behalf of the participants uh, two famous lines or well known lines is coming to mind so let us share that that you know all of you uh, this two lines that ashudoma shadgomay tamoshoma jyotirgomay that is hey eternal hey eternal ji to take us from to take us from the path of faults to the path of truth to take us from the world of darkness to the world of light so this refresher course actually is successful in this uh, endeavor and we uh, hope that uh, the endeavor of ramanujan college for imparting knowledge and we the participants our learning clear it will continue in the future as well and we will meet uh, at some other program or some other platform uh, this is the wish should be uh, should be uh, given to all of you and with these few words it is time to say uh, it's time to end this with the best wishes for all of you for the upcoming time to remain healthy uh, take care uh, wear mask maintain social distancing take vaccinations and uh, live a covid free days and nights thank you thank you all for your patient caring thank you thank you very much thank you mr saha i would now like to invite kailash chandra misra uh, for his experience sharing and feedback sharing with us
am i audible to you uh, mr misra you unmute kailash ji aap unmute kare apne aap ko uh, there must be a two girl in the left bottom side yeah 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 ha yeah. sir is it audible sir yes yes go okay ahead. okay sir i like esteemed principal professor s p agrawal sir honorable guest of the occasion dr k v subramanyam chief economic advisor government of india respected convener madam and our entire team and my dear fellow participants at the outset i wish that you along with your family stay safe and healthy i am dr kalyash chandra misra assistant professor of economics mpc autonomous college baripada odisha the refresher course on the topic indian economy exploring new economic opportunities in post pandemic world which was started from 29th april to 13th may 2021 during this period we have attended 16 sessions in this pandemic situation we can able to know the latest development of indian economy through the course i have attended the course for the first time under virtual mode under your college i am able to learn many things the resource persons are very much resourceful and share the experience very lucidly it is a fantastic experience i will expect to learn and participate in many more such fdp and rc program organized by your college this program is proved successful under the dynamic leadership of the principal professor agrawal sir due to his smart team members the program was conducted smoothly and successfully in his inaugural session agrawal sir ignited the participants and focused on nep 2020 and for one thing i would like to tell you here if possible instead of only one number of panel discussion it may be increased to two numbers otherwise everything is all right we have learnt many things and we will try to whatever knowledge we have acquired here try to disseminate the knowledge in our college among the students because knowledge should be disseminated from college to village from university to community so that the very purpose of refresher course or this type of program particularly the objective of education will be proved successful at the end i will extend my heartfelt gratitude to the convener bhavna madam and her entire team and especially my dear fellow participants once again i would like to thank the convener for giving me the opportunity to participate in the feedback session thank you everybody thank you very much thank you kailash ji nicely said sir, and sir, we will thank you sir. thank you very thank much. you very much thank you uh, i would like uh, to invite now uh, lata kuparde uh, please ma'am over to you yes sir good afternoon sir am i audible yeah yes sir good afternoon everybody i am lata kuparde assistant professor government first grade college silverly haveri district karnataka state first of all i am very much thankful to the organizer for giving me an opportunity to share my views regarding a uh, refresher course education plays an important role in everybody's life education made the life disciplined in students and develops ethics among them to become an informed and civilized human being in every education system students teachers and content are playing very important role equally if students are the main factor in the education system the teachers are the backbone of the system that will shape the future of the aspirant students before making the students aware and educated teachers must be well versed in his concern of specialization teachers should be updating their knowledge by means of various ways such as refresher course orientation induction etc in our knowledge based age education higher education has become an essential for our prosperity and quality of life i hope the sincere efforts made by the ramanujan college would enlarge a further horizon of teachers of higher education to reengineer their teaching and research skills so as to make their service more meaningful and productive this refresher course entitled exploring new economic opportunities in the post pandemic world refreshed our knowledge and motivated us to be aware of the latest latest trends in the field of study the course is interactive and thought provoking i extend heartfelt thanks for a great course great presentation style lots of opportunity to ask questions and talk about real life examples which all made for a real enjoyable and informative course the whole course has been extremely well structured and i have enjoyed taking it superb course with enthusiastic tutors who kept their interest for the whole time 
I really enjoyed the course and learned more than I ever thought I would. I am really delighted to have been able to be a part of this refresher course. Tremendous learning experience. But one thing is that I wanted to have the more sessions, uh, but still uh, uh, less sessions were conducted. The whole uh, anyway, I thank the whole team of Ramanujan College for your efforts and hard work. And once again, the stay safe and healthy. Thank you once one and all. Thank you, thank you, Lata ji. Uh, I hope everything is okay in Karnataka because you are coming from Karnataka, and these days a lot of news about Karnataka. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The cases of the COVID is increasing. So, what about in your city? Is it uh, okay? Here also we have, sir. Yeah, here also we have the more cases. Okay. But still, uh, manage is very difficult to manage. Yes, yes. So because you because of the lack of health facilities. These days you are doing online teaching only and uh, no physical classes. We have not yet started, sir. We are supposed to start on seventeenth. Okay. okay. According to our university, there's a notification. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, we now move to Surendra Mehar for his experience sharing. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yeah. Uh, uh, myself, Dr. Surendra Mehar. Uh, I'm working as assistant professor in the Department of Economics, Baba Sahib Bhim Rao American University, Lucknow. Uh, uh, first of all, on, on the behalf of all the participants, uh, I would like to uh, thank and congratulate the principal, uh, Professor S. P. Agrawal sir, and the entire organizing team for uh, organizing such a beautiful programs on the uh, different issues of Indian economy. Uh, uh, we we actually had a uh, you know lots of learning experiences. We got the opportunity to listen to uh, the great stalwarts in economics, the likes of Professor uh, Professor uh, Nagraj, uh, Professor Majumdar, and many more uh, you know scholars who have worked in the field of economics and social studies. Uh, what is more important uh, in this particular uh, programs, uh, to my mind, was that. Uh, uh, all the speakers, they have, you know, flagged the different research issues, uh, which will be quite beneficial for all the faculty members, those who are, you know, participating in this program, as well as to the research scholars. And uh, more interestingly, uh, I, what I uh, liked in this program was that the, the system of evaluations, it was quite uh, interesting and it was a great learning experiences. You know, you uh, make us busy in, you know, writing uh, assignments, uh, writing quizzes and all that. In fact, I know I recommended to my uh, faculty members, my research scholars, to attend uh, the programs that will be organized by your uh, esteemed organizations. So it is quite a, a great experience for uh, from uh, from for all of us. Uh, I would like to uh, suggest one more uh, one things. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's a kind of a proposal, you can say. Instead of you know uh, giving uh, one or uh, uh, you know variety of assignments, I would propose that. Uh, uh, should have given at least one or maximum two assignments so that each participant would have you know worked in their respective research areas and later on uh, i could have published it in the form of you know edited books so uh, what i what i'm trying to say is that it must be uh, the the proceedings of this you know particular program has to be documented in a well manner uh, so that research could have been you know disseminated so it was a really very uh, beautiful experiences. And uh, despite the pandemic situations, uh, all the organizing team, uh, the principal sir was quite active in you know, organizing these programs. In fact, there are some you know, uh, speakers, those who were you know, uh, you know, saw, uh, seen some casualty in their family member, but still you know, they came out and uh, spoke and they, uh, they shared their ideas to us. So it was a very uh, great experiences. So uh, uh, once again, I, I, I thank you all, all the members, the principal sirs, and I wish all of you a very safe day. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Surendra ji. Thank you. We'll keep uh, your idea in mind. Sure. Thank you, sir. So, uh, thank you very much for these valuable feedbacks. Uh, they will surely help us in organizing such an event uh, with for, uh, further improvement in future. With this, I would like to call upon Bahana ma'am to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Chadal sir. Uh, I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks for this refresher course. As someone once said, the show must go on. Now that this is a show, I appreciate everyone's effort to be together, be it virtually in these times. First and foremost, 
I would like to express my gratitude to the fighting spirits of everyone who have been part of this repression force. I, on behalf of my entire college fraternity, I express heartly gratitude to the honorable and respected chief guest, Dr. K.V. Subramanian sir, for accepting our request and gracing us today. And sure, our participants have received the best from his lecture. I would also like to express a gratitude for Principal Ramanujan College, Dr. S.P. Agarwal sir, for being exemplary for us in turning this pandemic challenge to an opportunity of learning. So we thank you for being an inspiration to us and continuing in future. And on behalf of my organizing team, I'm heartily grateful to all the speakers and resource person who have joined us in this program for accepting our request and helping us prove that there can be no barrier to learning, even when the whole world is shut down. We have been fortunate to have had the best of renowned identities from government, academics, banking, industry, and areas as a, and other areas as a part of this course. It has been our tribute to host all the experts as well as participants of the special course. I would like to appreciate the spirits and such enthusiastic zeal of our participants to learn. All your feedbacks are close to our heart and we will consider them for our future projects. Lastly, it has been an honor to work with the best organizing team we have had in this course. Some of our members of our team themselves have had been affected by COVID, yet they showed great strength in fulfilling their responsibilities. I would also like to express deepest gratitudes to our technical team and IT department of our college for helping us in executing this course. Thank you so much, everyone. It has indeed been a pleasure uh, to be a part of this course. Thank you so much. Uh, before Thank concluding, you. I would Thank just you, like Mama to thank you. thank you very much. You did a wonderful job. Your team did a wonderful work. And I think, uh, you know, these kind of programs uh, we should not leave on. Maybe, you know, in a month or two, we should repeat such programs because very important, very meaningful, and uh, uh, they, they really deliver goods uh, in the society. And the kind of resource person you invited are really great because they, they have something to, to uh, disseminate and uh, give knowledge to our young participants. And uh, even today's lecture was also very good, you know, the, about research, which I always say that uh, your writing skills and uh, you should publish in the best of the journals and then, uh, you know, a new idea, which is very, very important because doing this, uh, you know, just for the sake of publication is of no use. So with this, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Before concluding, I would like to inform all the participants that the certificates will be issued within 15 working days. We would uh, uh, inform you on the Telegram group about the same. Thank you so much. Stay healthy, stay safe. Ravindra, sir? Ji, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, sir, uh, uh, we can uh, end the live lecture, sir. Okay, ma'am. Okay.